Dear colleagues, thank you very much for the possibility to talk about me and my myopia. This is my retina after retinal detachment surgery and after cataract surgery. This is my daughter, she is also myopic and I think now you know why I'm interested in myopia management. Why treat myopia in the first place? I think it's very clear myopes have an increased risk for eye diseases like myopic maculopathy, cataract, glaucoma or retinal detachment. When asking for the assessment of myopia progression by axial length or by refraction, the answer is very clear. It's the axial length because the increase in refraction underestimates the increase in axial length. This is the result of this study, so biometry is very important. When we are looking for the myopia risk assessment, then the Tiedemann curves are very important at the first place. And then for the progression of myopia, it's mandatory to have a biometer like from Oculus, from Landstar or from Topcon. So we have now the possibility with different companies to measure the axial length very quickly and easy. When we are looking for the treatment options, we have two options. We have the pharmacological way and the optical way. I'd like to talk first about atropine. For atropine, we have different studies and here are the results of these studies. What is really clear is that the results are depending on the concentration of atropine. So we have different results. But we have also different results with the concentration. Again, with low concentration atropine, we have different results. So the effectiveness of atropine depends on the axial length, uh, depends on the refraction, and depends on the age when starting the therapy. When we are looking for the real-life data and when we are looking for the low-dose atropine, this is our publication, we see a statistically significant effect of atropine on axial lengths, but little clinical uh, important relevance. That means that the effect of atropine is not as good as what we hoped. The reason is because the atropine have different formulations, we have not the, the best formulation yet, then we are dependent on the therapy compliance and about the adherence of the patients of the children. So our recommendation is now 0.025% of atropine, which is now uh, be used in our clinic. When we are looking for the optical options, we know that the single vision lens produce and focus on the center of the retina with the hyperobjective focus in the periphery, which is a growth stimulus for the eye. So the solution is very clear. It's, uh, it's the induction of myopictive focus in the periphery. We know that the peripheral myopictive focus by multiple contact lenses and we also hear the effect of the concentration, that means the add power. So when we have multiple contact lenses with higher add power, we have a better results in myopia stopping or reducing. Now we have the possibilities with the dim spectacle lenses. I think that's the better option because uh, we are not depending on the duration uh, effect of the contact lenses because the glasses is always on the nose. The other thing it's very nice is that you really don't see that we have a special uh, spectacle uh, for the children. You see this low or this small lenset on the side. Here we have the results of the DIMS study. You see that we have a statistically significant effect even after six months. And this is very important that we know. So we have a very fast uh, response for the treatment. And what we also see is that after two years, when the control group is moving to the DIMS technology, also the effect will still be there. So. When we are looking again for the study results, we see that we have an inhibition of 60%. The question is, what about the remaining 40%? What is the treatment gap? And also the question, what is our treatment goal? 
The treatment goal, I think, it should be the eye growth of ametropic children. When we are here looking for the ametropic eye growth, calculated from Truppenbrot and with our results, and we are, when we are plotting the study results, you see clearly that the group with the DIMS glasses have the same axial elongation as the ametropic growth. That means that we have an inhibition not of 60%, it's an inhibition of 100%. So the clinical consequence is that we have this suggestion about a new standard of evaluation of myopia therapy. So we have this age-matched amotropic eye growth curve and we do an average between boys and girls so that we have now this new tolerance curve above the amotropic eye growth. So what is tolerable, I think 25% uh, above the amotropic eye growth for children under 13 years and children above 13 years, I think 0.1 millimeter per year should be uh, the limit. And this would end in a progression of myopia of 1 or 1.5 diopters until adulthood. So when we are now are looking for the results of the studies which are now age matched then we see the benefit in the optical corrections with the dims glasses you see we have the amotropic eye growth and we have also very good results with the multifocal contact lenses and you see that the concentration depending effect of atropine so what we now have for the daily evaluation is that we have our age match myopia control calculator which is very easy to use just putting in the uh, the axial length the age it's a boy or a girl and then we have the suggestion of this calculator for the therapy so i think the axial Amotropic eye growth should be the goal for our myopia therapy and we have to look that we get the restoration of the amotropic growth. So as a first result, I would suggest that we have to start the treatment as early in life as possible. Um, trying any therapy is better than no therapy. Axial length measurement is necessary as an indicator and control tool for therapy management. The treatment effect is dose dependent for atropine, for multifocal contact lenses, but also for the peripheral defocus lenses. The treatment effect is duration dependent. The longer and consistent, the better. So myo glasses are the easiest and most effective way in myopia control. Now I will show you in a few minutes the real life experience with Tim's spectacles. Now we have more than 100 children. We look at the first step for the adaptation and it was very interesting to see that at the first day the children are very comfortable with the DIMS technology at the first day and after two weeks uh, almost every child have no problems with the DIMS technology and you see also for the visual quality there are no concerns about far vision for reading abilities and also when they are playing around is no problem with this new spectacles. The next step I think it will be the combination of the DIMS technology and the low dose atropine and for me it was very important to look for the traffic safety with the DIMS technology and we just tested with the meso test where we look where to the contrast sensitivity under uh, different conditions with clair and without clair and with the combination of dims and atropine and you see the limit for the permit for driving in public transport and you see it's really possible with the dims spectacles 
with atropine and without atropine. So we have really a very safe uh, possibility to treat myopia. So the second summary for me is we have a fast adaptation on dim spectacles. There are no considerable limitation in visual quality. The combination of DIMS and atropine, if there is a therapeutic gap, and this is really important, um, we have no clinically relevant reduction in the visual performance of DIMS and atropine treatment, and there are no concerns regarding the traffic safety. So let me put this all together, my personal recommendation, me and my myopia treatment. The first line therapy is Myosmart um, and in the case of the therapeutic gap, it's the combination of Myosmart and atropine with 0.025%. If there is a desire of spectacle independence, I would suggest multifocal contact lenses with high addition. And if there is a desire of spectacle freedom, then AutoK, I think it would be a very good solution. Thank you very much for your attention.